so today the topic is kubernetes ingress okay it is also known as um, ingress resources and uh, along with the ingress resources we will be seeing ingress controllers how ingress resources will be implemented by ingress controllers and we'll be seeing two different types of ingress controllers one is from the nginx and the other one is from the traffic and we'll also see what are the different types of routings one is with the path based routing the other one is the url based routing before going further let's see what exactly we have learned so far in the kubernetes services okay so that will help us understand the ingress controllers better so how many different types of services we had seen node port cluster ip load balancer external headless yeah so let's say if i have an application so that application can have um, uh, any number of ports right and also that comp that application can have any number of microservices let's say i have three different microservices for an application okay this is like a front end okay i'm not taking number of replicas okay the front end can have three replicas like that okay and then there is a uh, middleware and then there is a database involved let's say for that application this complete setup is an application where this is the front end this is the middleware and the other one is the database let's say okay so how do front end talk to the middleware or uh, with any of the other parts in that application let's say when front end wants to talk to the middleware so we create a service to that middleware right yes and when middleware wants to talk to the db we have a, a particular service for the db so in this case these services are internal right so these services can be either cluster ip or in case of databases we said that it can be headless or let's say that it is cluster ip for time being okay these services are accessible within the cluster but front end application over here has to be accessed outside the cluster so that's say for the front end we create two different types of services either it can be a node port or it can be a load balancer right in case of a node port what happens guys in case of a node port what happens so that node port in the node port we are what exactly we are doing we are trying to expose a port right 30000 yes. to 32767 in this range <laughs> so uh, when once you create a node port service for any kind of a port a random port in this range will be assigned okay so how to access this application now this front end application using ip that ip can be your any ip in the cluster master ip worker ip anything so this is let's say i'm using the master ip colon the port number let's say 30 32000 is the port assigned for that particular application okay so now what is the disadvantage of this is what is the disadvantage so i cannot have a static dns name because dns only maps to the ip but port uh, always i have to write it let's say so for this complete application i have a dns name like www.app.com app1.com so but using this one i cannot access this application because using this gns name it only resolves to the ip but i should also provide the port otherwise i cannot access this application so we are talking about only one application so what if the cluster has 100 applications so for that 100 applications i'll have a dns names but uh, i should also provide a different port number right for the other applications okay so this is not very you know this is not looking good right so this we cannot give it to the customer saying that you use this dns name and also use the port number to access the application so this we can't do so in order to avoid this what we did instead of going for node port we went for the load balancer <clears throat> and one more thing guys in the earlier case since if you don't since you don't want to use the port number so what we did in one of the uh, examples is we have created a ha proxy reverse proxy and this reverse proxy is listening on 80 and it can send the request to the any of the back end okay so back end in the sense this ip colon port combination 
backend in the sense this IP comma port combination, right? So this listens on 80. Let's say HA proxy is running in a separate VM. So this VM has an IP address now. Let's say this is a IP address. And this is listening on 80. So once you hit the VM on 80, it will send the traffic to some IP call and port combination. So in this case, what happens is so you can access your application using this IP. So once you have the IP, you can easily map it to a DNS. Okay, so now I can achieve a single DNS using HA proxy. But this is an extra setup, right? So that's why I went for the load balancer service time where cloud provider will uh, provide a cloud load balancer for me and he will give a public IP. Okay, so now what happens is once you hit this public IP, it will redirect the traffic to that particular service load balancer service and then that service will forward that to backend ports. Okay, now my, I can have access the application using this public IP. Once I have the public IP, I can also have the DNS name. Correct? But what happens in this case is for every application that I expose as a load balancer, I have to have the public IP assigned by my cloud provider. So which is a very costly affair because we know right public IPs are, aren't very cheap. Okay. So in this case, what happens is for every application that we expose. So there is a cost involved. And let's say your uh, Kubernetes cluster is hosting, let's say some 100 plus applications. So there are 100 plus public IPs are needed just for you. Okay, first of all, your cloud provider won't allow that. But even if you allow, it's going to be very costly. Correct? Correct or not? Yes, Victor. So in order to avoid all these, you know, disadvantages, right? The uh, disadvantages of having the uh, port number or the disadvantage of having a public IP for each and every application. So what if we have certain uh, a mechanism where I expose only one pod, but that pod will take care of routing the traffic to various other applications inside my cluster. Okay, so what would be the arrangement is here. So what I'm trying to achieve is I have a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so this Kubernetes cluster is hosting a lot of applications. Okay, this is application one. Okay, so when I talk about this application one, so I'm ta not talking about the internal pods, number of pods or the complete stack. So let's say this is only a front end application. Okay, just front end I'll expose outside, right? Rest all it will automatically manage internally to the cluster IP services. Let's say this front end wants access to the DB. So it will always have the cluster IP service. Okay, so we are not talking about this arrangement. Okay, this anyways we will do. We'll talk about the front end that I wanted to expose. So there is one front end application. Uh, again, there is one more front end application. Okay, so there are a lot of front end applications running inside the Kubernetes cluster. So in order to access this right so what i will do i'll create a service and then I expose it as a node port or load balancer again the same is the case with this the same is the case with this correct i'll do this right this can be either a node port or it can be a load balancer but what i'm saying is i don't want to use such kind of okay uh node port or load balancer service type okay i want some other kind of mechanism where I don't want to expose all the applications okay, individually. Okay, in this case, what I'll do is I'll create a another pod. Okay, so that pod is a kind of a proxy pod. It is like a proxy. Okay, so whenever I wanted to access this application, Okay, the request should come to this proxy only. Okay. And for the uh, accessing this application also, the request should come to the, this proxy only. Okay, but since this is a pod, obviously it has to be exposed, right? Correct? There should be a service ex uh, involved for this also. So for this service, I can use node port or load balancer depending upon where I am running my cluster. Let's say I am running in my cloud. So what I'll do is for this particular pod over here, I'll create a load balance service and then my cloud provider has given me a public IP. This IP has given. Okay. 
now what i'll do is i'll create separate dns names for each of my application the first dns name for my first application let's say it is app1.com okay second one is app2.com similarly i'll create all the dns entries but all these dns will point to only one ip which is my this proxy ip proxy ports ip this proxy ports ip is nothing but uh, this is not the proxy uh, this is the application ip for this particular proxy okay so if whenever if i whenever i hit this app on dot com it will come here similarly for the rest of the applications now what this proxy pod will do is it will have some rules defined okay i'll supply some rules to it what i will say is whenever you get a request from this url app on dot com so you direct the traffic to this particular service these services are now internal services okay this is this is cluster ip so now if you see all applications are hidden these are all cluster ips this is not node port or load balancer so that i can access from outside so outside direct access from outside is now blocked access through only proxies enabled okay let's say i wanted to uh, so this this proxy port is coming uh, is getting the request from this dns so this dns once you enter in the browser it resolves to this ip so the request comes to this ip okay now once the request comes to this ip i mean that to this pod so the pod will see what is the dns name then according to the rules that i have written so it will send the traffic to the back end pod similarly for the app 3 now if you see the advantage here so none of my applications are exposed outside there only one proxy pod that is exposed as a load balancer so i will be charged only for one public ip okay there is only one public ip ip involved so i'll be charged for this ip but using the same ip okay i can access hundreds of applications running inside my cluster so this is an application this is an application this is an application but for none of the applications have exposed the service as node port or load balancer understood guys yes vikram so this proxy pod in this case we are calling it as ingress controllers okay so these rules are known as ingress resources okay so these are two different things ingress resources are native to kubernetes that means that kubernetes platform supports them these ingress controllers are from third party providers it can be nginx it can be ha proxy it can be istio anything these are not native okay you have to install them but these are native you just have to install uh, run the configuration okay so ingress controllers needs ingress resources to function properly okay so we'll we'll come back to it now we understood right why we need ingress controller it is just a proxy pod but it cannot be simple proxy pod like ha proxy or something so it is a different or special kind of a proxy okay how how it is different from the rest of the proxies we are going to see understood what okay. if uh, proxy pod gets unhealthy mm, so so we won't deploy a single instance of proxy okay it is again deployed as a deployment or a daemon set understood so your proxy yes. won't run on a single node it can either run as a daemon set so we'll come back to daemon set daemon set and deployment are more, more or less the same but what happens is in the deployment we define number of replicas right three replicas four replicas but in case of a daemon set we won't uh define the replicas okay so if you're exposing any application as a daemon set or any pod as a daemon set kubernetes make sure that there is at least one pod running per node there is only one pod running per node that lets me uh, let's say that i have 100 worker nodes so if you deploy a pod as daemon set in all the worker nodes there is one proxy pod running okay if you add a new node okay so this proxy this pod will automatically gets 
scheduled onto that node also okay in this case these replica count is nothing but the number of nodes participating in the orchestration understood yes okay yeah so this is about the ingress controller so let's go back to the presentation and then see okay so what are the cons of a node port we had seen right so in order to access our application we need a, a port plus ip combination so we cannot have a dns we can have dns only to the node port ip right sorry node ip but node port we have to manually enter every time so that is not so you know easy to remember also so that is the uh, disadvantage and one is one of the disadvantages of using uh, load balancer is cloud load balancer is for every service that you expose as a load balancer you will be assigned a public ip where public ips are not cheap okay so as you have uh, more number of applications running so the cost you know that incurred will also increases understood so in order to avoid all these disadvantages right so we can have ingress so what as what is ingress is ingress allows us to manage all the above functionalities like the routing okay managing the ssls so we'll come back to it okay so ingress manages all these functionalities by within the cluster itself okay if you see this load balancer this load balancer is outside the cluster it is provisioned by our cloud service providers but this ingress controller runs within the cluster and it will implement all those routing capabilities okay now what is an ingress controller ingress is probably the most powerful way to expose the services outside the cluster it is true okay so we will not use either node port or load balancer we will always use ingress controller because ingress controller will support multiple applications okay so we can have only one ingress controller exposed as a load balancer and we pay only for the load balancer ip that is assigned to our ingress controller okay if you see in the diagram over here i have a pod 1 and i have pod 2 these represent different set of applications and there is a service involved for each pod for each application so these services are now these are not node port or load balancer these are only cluster ip so i restricted the access to within the cluster and now there is an ingress controller okay so this ingress controller according to the ingress rules they direct the tra divert the traffic to different services okay since uh, this ingress is within the cluster it needs to talk to the service within the cluster itself so that's the reason why we made all these services as cluster ips okay now once uh, i have the ingress control in place i have to expose it outside right so i will use load balancer or the node port service since i am in the cloud i'll use load balancer then immediately i'll be assigned a public ip address okay so that public ip address i can map to any number of dns names so all these dns names right they resolve only to this particular ip then you must be asking one question right so you're saying all the dns names come to the same ingress controller that means that they resolve to the same ip address okay but how do ingress differentiate okay the uh, the different dns names and how do ingress divert the traffic exactly to that particular service right you are saying if the request is from uh, app1.com okay the ingress is sending it to service 1 okay but how does ingress know that it is the request is coming from app1 because this app this is a dns name dns name always resolve to the ip address so when you hit some url so obviously you are uh, going to some ip in our case if the url is this the ip is the ingress load balances ip okay but how do ingress controller know about the dns name because all it cares about the its ip address right it knows only its ip address correct how does it know the source dns guys anyone know about this routing Any tables place? sorry no routing tables will not have this have dns address, right? right 
yeah ingress rules yeah ingress rules will have uh, this information but the information is within the cluster that i'm saying if it is app1.com you go to service one okay but how do ingress know that the request came from app1.com because i'm not because when i'm entering this url on in the browser this url is resolved to ip address and the traffic is forwarding to the ip address correct but how does ingress control know that it came from this correct understood or not yeah yes sir so if i go back to the browser so it all depends on the http headers okay whenever i'm doing some uh, you know facebook.com or any any site right so obviously it gets resolved to ip address and the request goes to the the server which is having that ip address right but how does server know that i am using google.com to reach it no one said it right because that information is with the dns server but the exact application server doesn't know you know how the user uh, accessed it okay it thinks that they accessed with the ip address okay if i do 8.8.8.8 okay still my google page should uh, you know open right okay let's uh, do 8.4. i don't know what is the ip address of the uh, google okay if i do this so obviously that server should respond with the information right the web page if i'm just doing google.com okay see the page got open but how does the server knows about this dns name if i just go to the network sections so what i did is i just right clicked on the page clicked on inspect go to the network section and then try to reload this page is google.com and if you see the first result that is www.google.com if you click on this and then if you go to the header section right see the request url okay so this http headers are transmitted to or transferred to the receiving server and the receiving server can read the http headers from the request so in one of the headers we have the request url that shows from which dns name it got the request okay so if i just do uh, let's say some other site right okay some linkedin dot uh, in if i just click on this if you just go to the first oh very linkedin.com okay if you see the request url it is linkedin.com okay understood guys understood or not so that request headers will have your request url but if i am just doing 8.8.8 .8 .8, okay if i am clicking on this see here the request url is not the dns name it the ip address correct in this case the server knows that the request came from some ip address see here it will not know what dns name i used when i use dns name then only it will be sent to the server that i requested that url okay if i just enter c8.8.8.8 so dns.google.com page open understood guys how the ingress yes. controller knows so from the browser when you are trying to access a url that information comes to the ingress in the form of http headers so while by reading the headers it will know from which url that request came okay yes yeah, so let's move forward okay there are a lot of ingress controllers uh, in the market so we have the aws load balancer and then traffic nginx contour istio these are all you know ingress controllers these are not native to the kubernetes installation so you need to install them separately okay but ingress rules will be automatically detected by the kubernetes because kubernetes understand the kubernetes uh, ingress rules okay understood guys and also we can um, have the ssl and the uh, ssl termination at the ingress that means that you can have the https traffic okay till the ingress 
and once the uh, the traffic uh, goes inside the cluster it can be plain http okay you can also have that that means that till ingress we can have the https and inside we have http that means that in uh, this one uh, at the ingress we can do ssl termination okay you can terminate your ssl at the ingress okay now what is the difference between ingress controllers and ingress resources okay so there is an, um, a confusion between this ingress ingress resources okay when we say about ingress or ingress rules or ingress resources we are talking about the ingress rules or the resources okay so when we specifically mention or uh, uh, use the name controller then it refers to the ingress controller but if someone is mentioning uh, about the name ingress they are talking about the ingress rules okay what are these ingress rules is how to route the traffic okay whether uh, it should be routed with a particular url or with a particular route how does the routing happens within the cluster is defined in the rule but who will implement all these rules it is the ingress controller ingress controller is, is a sort of a you know proxy okay so that needs some information right if you see in the ha proxy configuration last time when we uh, used right okay what we did is we said that whenever a request comes on port 80 you forward it to certain backend ports or uh, backend uh, servers the backend servers uh, are ip colon port combinations right so we have used ip1 ip2 ip3 right these ips belong to your kubernetes nodes so this is for the proxy so even the ingress controllers are uh, act, acting like a proxy inside the kubernetes platform understood guys yes vikram okay so now let's say you wanted to expose ingress controller as load balancer okay if you are acting uh, if you are um, exposing the ingress controller ingress control is nothing but a pod okay as in load balancer so obviously there is a uh, ip address assigned to you now for all the application dns names i will point to that load balancer ip itself okay and then depending upon the url that a user access the application let's say connected city.com then that uh, request comes to the ingress controller ingress control will read the http headers information that has the incoming dns request okay then using the rules that i have defined so it will route to the proper service okay let's say if the request is from connected city.com that rules are defined here then what i'll do is if i request coming from this url i'll say forward it to this service name call and port number of the service so this is a cluster ip service because let's say this is a my standalone application if i don't have the ingress controller what would be this connected city service guys it can be either node port or load balancer right but what I did is in this case, I made this connected city as cluster IP. So this will have a port number. This will have a target port. And then this target port correspond to the, the port of the underlying, the container port of the underlying port, right? This we had seen. Understood? When a request comes from the other URL, so the according to the routing rules, it will be sent to the other service. Now, none of my applications are exposed outside. It is only exposed through ingress controller and one of the good thing about using this kind of a setup is without proper dns name you cannot access my application okay earlier what we uh, did with the node port service is so using the node port service i can access the application on any ip address of the node call on that port number right let's say one master node is down okay let's say one worker node is down i can still access the application using master ip call and port number but in this case here no ips are involved you cannot access your application with the uh, ip of that particular node master or slave node it can be accessed only through dns names okay because ingress rules are defined in the, as the dns names and ingress controller will only route the traffic with the dns names so now my application is completely protected if you don't know about my uh, about the dns what exact dns i've used you cannot access my application 
Understood, guys. Now let's say if I'm exposing the ingress controller as a node port. Okay, since I'm running on the uh, you know on prem, I don't have any um, load balancer. What I did is I exposed ingress controller as node port, and the node port assigned is thirty thousand one. But thirty thousand one, I cannot use it for the DNS mapping, so I used HA proxy here. Okay, and then HA proxy listens on eighty. Okay, and then it forward the traffic to the uh, the IP colon the port combination, right? Since this is a multi-node cluster, the IP can be any IP in the cluster, master, slave, and then it listens on 80. So now this HA proxy will get an IP address, right? 10.10.1.1 something, colon 80. So this one I can map it to all these DNS names. So the when you hit this DNS, it will go to HA proxy. HA proxy will redirect the traffic to IP plus port combination. And then ingress rules will be evaluated by the ingress controller and according to the DNS which I used so the routing will happen Understood guys Okay Now what is the difference between node port load balancer in ingress it is uh, simple so whenever I expose a service as node, uh, node port so I'll be you know assigning a port number by the kubernetes cluster for accessing my application so for this service 30001 is the port assigned for this service 30002 is the port assigned okay but in case of load balancer okay i expose the service okay as a load balancer okay then for each of the service i get the ip address the ip1 is for the service one let's say for the service two i get the ip2 public ips so i will you know map one dns name app onecom dns to this ip www.app.2.com to this ip2 so now users can access my application like this and we know the disadvantage the disadvantage is public ips are costly and the third one is using the ingress if you see here this cloud load balancer and the um, you know everything is outside right the routing is now outside the kubernetes platform but in case of an ingress ingress is just residing inside the platform kubernetes platform it is like a pod okay for all my application there is a master pod okay that is acting as a router and this router has to be exposed outside i can use node port or load balancer if i am on cloud i can expose this ingress pod as a load balancer then i'll get only one ip address so that one ip address can have multiple dns names understood guys yes sir okay so now let's uh, go to the actual implementation of ingress okay so ingress rules there are two different types of ingress rules okay so one is the path based okay so there are two types of routings one is the path based routing and the other one is the host based routing so what do i mean by that is okay so let's say that i have uh, you know uh, inside one uh, major cloud platform okay let's talk about uh, uh, google itself okay so inside google there are a lot of applications right there is a mail application okay and then there is a search application okay there are a lot of applications right and what could be the other one any example uh, analytics drive. let's see. yeah so drive okay so let's say they want different types of uh, you know uh, dns names for all these applications so there can be two ways one is the path based so what is path based is i'll use the same dns name google.com so i'll have different path if i just do slash mail the request will go here slash uh, search the request will go here okay i can have this right so when you differentiate something uh, using a path like slash mail slash search okay but the the name at the uh, uh, beginning here it is same these are known as path based routing in case of url based routing what i do is i'll assign a dedicated url for all this for this what i'll do i'll just use mail.google.com this i'll use search.google.com 
analytics.google.com drive.google.com this is the proper url right even we are using the same urls to access google applications okay there are two ways correct path based or the url based understood guys yes okay yep okay so now let's talk about uh, ingress rules because ingress controllers anyways we know right uh, these are nothing but the pod okay if i see about the path based ingress routing so this is the api version kind is ingress and the name you can define any name depending upon your application okay and i can have multiple ingress uh, definitions okay so you define everything in a single file for all the 100 applications or for each of the application you create an individual ingress file it is same okay so what i'm saying here is in inside the rules section okay so these rules are for the hosts okay http paths okay so the path is now for slash nginx when you say about path is slash nginx okay so this uh ingress control over here will listen on only uh, the paths okay it won't care about from where the request came okay whether the user try to access this ingress controller using the ip address like this 30001 slash some nginx and next is the path so this ingress control will not uh, care about this part whether is he has used ip plus port combination to access me or he has used some um, you know dns to access me it will not care it will respond to any of the queries it only cares about what is the path in the url okay so if i am saying the path is slash nginx so it will respond to slash nginx route so when i am saying slash nginx what it is doing at the back end it is sending to some service name and the port on which that service is listening understood similarly when i am doing slash flask it is redirecting the traffic to some service and port combination understood guys yes sir if you see the host based routing here the host is i have not mentioned any host because it will respond to any of the host but in case of host based it will respond to only a particular uh, host so here i am saying nginx app.com and then there is no path if you see there is no path here there is host again same if you are receiving some traffic from this particular host then you redirect the traffic to this particular service and port combination in this case what happens is if you are trying to access this ingress controller or the ip address or uh, something let's say uh, something like this okay it won't respond because this ingress controller will not understand the ip addresses now it will only route depending upon the dns names okay so when you are not using the dns name in the browser as i said earlier the http address will not have that url information so when ingress control doesn't have the url information obviously it will not redirect right it will not it cannot analyze okay so using url based routing you can access your application using the urls you cannot access through any ips because once you hit the ip in the browser only that ip gets to the ingress controller it will read that header but using ip addresses we are not routing right we are routing only on the url level okay understood guys the difference yes okay uh, now this is a beta version of the uh, ingress controller so after some improvements right this beta version is now released as a stable version okay this controller or uh, this resources is now in the stable state which is v1 state in the v1 uh, there is a slight change in the backend syntax okay so now this syntax is okay like this so earlier it was service name colon some service name and then service port right this is the different dictionary we have used but in this case now they have used service as a common key name and port number like this there is slight difference in the syntax that's it okay 
if i show you earlier one it is service name service port now it is service name and port are given like this okay so you have to see which version of ingress your you know the cluster is using okay if you just do api kubectl api resources and search for ingress you will get this api version right so if it is beta you will use the older version if it is v1 then you'll use the latest syntax understood guys hmm? yeah. Yeah. okay um yeah so after ingress resources we have the ingress class okay even this is an important question what is an ingress class is we can have multiple ingress controllers running inside the cluster so if i'm just talking about nginx for now so let's say that nginx is there traffic is there so there are you know two to three ingress controllers uh, are running inside my cluster okay but ingress rules doesn't have such kind of versions ingress rules are the ingress rules okay but how do we decide which ingress controller should implement or use my ingress resources correct because these rules should be implemented by one controller but there are two or three controllers which one should implement if all are implementing so that is an error right only one of the ingress controller should implement so for every ingress controller there is an ingress class so this ingress class is nothing but the name of the metadata given to that ingress controller okay so whenever we you know using the ingress rules right i can have the ingress class name like this that means that so the ingress controller with this class name should implement or use these rules if i don't give this ingress class name okay and if i am checking the ingress controller pod logs right you will get something like this ingress doesn't contain a valid ingress class that means that if there are multiple ingress controllers running so it will not uh, the ingress controller okay the ingress class okay if there are in, uh, multiple ingress controllers running right so one of the ingress controllers should implement these ingress okay not everyone so we decide them using the ingress class name so this way we uh, give the ing ingress class names here that indicates that only the ingress class with the nginx name should implement it okay so if you don't do a do that there will be an error in the ingress pod once you add this name and once you apply the changes again right so after that if you see here the configuration changes detected back and reload required that means that ingress control will automatically detect that you have now mentioned the ingress class name so it will automatically reload the configuration understood guys what is an ingress class again this is a very important question okay so let's go back to the practicals now okay so what um, the path based routing says is so there is an ingress controller that ingress controller will understand only the paths okay so there is a client so what the client is doing he is trying to access a url with this particular path it is slash cart now the slash cart part will be understood by the ingress controller it will check what are the backend services for this slash cart so i am talking about this if it is slash cart i will check what are the backend services for this slash cart then immediately it will forward the traffic to particular service now the service knows how is the forward the traffic to the backend ports right this is a cluster ip service okay similarly for slash wish list it knows how to route the traffic okay now name based routing name based routing uh, also we know right so instead of having the path like slash cart or something so i have the proper dns name so once the request comes from a particular dns name okay the traffic gets forwarded to back end services okay now we missed one more thing over here so when we are defining some path there is something known as path prefix or path type okay path type here we have used as prefix there are two values for this so one is the exact and the other one is prefix okay sometimes what happens is some users okay they'll try to access uh, application in two ways right let's say i wanted to access gmail so i can have slash gmail 
like this and sometimes what people will do people will add one more slash understand correct or wrong yes sir many people do this even i do this sometimes this slash is not needed but sometimes i'll enter it on the you know in the search path okay if you use prefix as the path type here if if the user uses slash or even if he doesn't use this route will work okay if i'm saying okay so let's say the path is slash alexa right if i'm just using path type as prefix then user if he is trying to access the this particular ingress controller using slash alexa slash also this will in uh, you know, execute but if i'm doing path type exact then the user has to use the exact path that means it should be only alexa if he tries to put one more slash that route will not happen okay so the more information is there in the uh, the uh, ingress controller section in the kubernetes official documentation i'll just open it up and i'll show you okay so inside the name based routing we know right so so depending upon the input dns name that the user uses in the browser so that uh, ingress controller will read this url information through the http headers and then according to the rules configured in the ingress controller right there are some rules then it will forward the traffic to particular service in this case if the user is accessing the ingress controller with card.amazon.com so this uh, particular request will be redirected to a particular service inside the cluster okay now well, let's drive into the uh, you know practical part so what we'll do is we'll implement path based routing using nginx ingress controller and we use url based routing in the traffic ingress control so that we'll cover at least two ingress controllers today okay and now what is nginx ingress controller it is basically it is an ingress controller it is being offered in two variants one is the open source and one is the paid one so we'll use the open source free one okay so how do we deploy it is so there is a documentation so i can simply use kubectl apply and the url that has the complete manifest file i can apply and the it is being applied in the ingress nginx namespace okay automatically our namespace will be created if we look at the yaml file right so we will see a namespace manifest also the definition so all the resources are being deployed in the ingress nginx okay namespace okay then inside minikube you don't have to install nginx ingress controller because it is already provided as an add on okay if i just do minikube add ons list i can see the ingress as the one of the add on then i have to enable that ingress and uh, once you enable this ingress controller will be deployed it will be again deployed in the ingress nginx namespace okay so any doubt guys before going into the actual uh, demo okay so what i took for this demo is i have three different front end applications okay uh, one is the hello so it will simply return hello from flask scan on path slash okay so there is one more microservice flask greet so if i use slash some name right if i am just using slash alexa it will just simply say hello alexa okay there is one more route or the application which listens on slash details so once you hit uh, uh, the ingress controller with slash details as the path so it will give you the pod ip mac address and the host name and all you know the docker files that i've used for building this uh, these three small you know applications are available in the uh, github in the kubernetes public repository I, these are all very small uh, you know source codes probably like each python file has some 10 lines of code it's very easy just to you know show you the different uh, different path based routing i've created these applications okay these are nothing very small applications and since these are all flask based applications so 5000 is the container port understood guys hello yes yeah. so the same thing path based routing so i will have the ingress controller deployed i'll expose it as a node port so there is one node port assigned so i'll try to access the ingress controller using uh, the ip caller 30862 that is the port if it is assigned 
and then I'll use the path. Okay, slash Alexa slash details or only slash. Okay, let's see how to configure the ingress rules and also the backend services. Okay. Okay, let's go to the VS Code. So I have two different folders, one for the path-based routing, the other one is the URL-based routing. So if I just open the uh, path-based routing, right? So I have a pod. Okay, so this pod is running the container uh, simple hello v1. Okay, and the container port is 5000. Okay, so for this pod, I have to create a service, right? Okay, I have created a service. I've uh, used flask hello as the service name and then if you see here this is cluster IP okay what if I use node port here if I use node port here then I am exposing this complete pod as the pod to the outside world right but since I'm using ingress I am restricting it to cluster IP and then the, uh, the container port is 5000 incoming port I kept it as 80 for simplicity then what is selector here it is the labels on the pod so what are labels on the pod it is here it's the same labels are used for selector similarly i have another uh, set of pods so one is a simple grid and there is a service for this similarly it is simple details there is a service involved for this understood guys so three different pods and there are three different cluster ips for each of the pod Understood? Yes, Vikram. Now let's yes, open sir. the path based routing and uh, you know, let me open in the split mode. Okay. Now on the left hand side, I have the uh, the actual pod and the service definitions. On the right hand side, I have the ingress. So let's uh, see on the uh, ingress side. So API version is this kind is ingress. Metadata, I can use uh, any name for that ingress controller. Now coming to the spec section. So as I said, it is mandatory to use ingress class name as uh, the ingress uh, in, uh, the ingress controller's name which we are using. So I'll uh, show you from where this ingress class name uh, I got the ingress class name. Okay. Now inside the rules section, if I just see here, path type I'm using as prefix and the path as slash. So whenever a user is accessing this application on slash. I'm saying follow the traffic to backend service with the name flask hello and that is listening on 80. If I just see the left hand side pod, so there is a flask hello pod which is listening on 80. Okay, this one that means that I'm accessing this application pod. So when the user is trying to access the slash, okay. Similarly, let's go to the second path, it is slash Alexa. So whenever user hit this URL, it is being followed to flask grid. So flask grid is my next service for this pod. Similarly is the other route slash details. So this is slash details it forward the traffic to slash details service. So this is the service name. Okay, basically I'm using the same thing over here. Okay, so there is an ingress controller which I have, I have to deploy now there are ingress rules so i have defined the ingress rules in such a way that for this uh, slash route you forward it to this service for slash lx as the route you forward it to this service for slash details as the route you forward it to this service okay and all the services i mentioned in the ingress rules as the ingress object okay so why i'm saying it is an ingress object so the name itself is the kind itself is ingress okay applications i've defined in the different file routes have defined in the different part understood guys correct so let's go back to uh, the browser and then see you know what is ingress okay so I'm just doing ingress kubernetes okay so the first link Okay, it will show you the uh, complete information about the ingress, what is happening, and then there is a link to the ingress controller. Okay, I'm just opening it in the other tab. Okay, so these are the ingress controllers. So ingress controllers are the controllers that take the ingress rules as an input. Okay, 
I will also prove you whether it is taking or not. So now these are all the controllers, ingress controllers, ambassador, you know, counter, HA proxy, Istio. Then we have where is our Nginx? Yeah, here Nginx ingress controller. If I just click on it, so I'll be redirected to the Nginx controller page. Okay, this is the page. Okay, now what we'll do is let's first. Uh, you know install the nginx ingress control so uh, what i'll do is i'll just search for nginx ingress controller kubernetes okay so somewhere i should have the github page okay for the nginx ingress controller see this is the github page okay so it is github.kubernetes.com slash kubernetes inside kubernetes we have the ingress nginx okay repository then if you go to the bottom so they'll show you some details on how to use it and let's click on get started document okay so now this is the nginx ingress control nginx so i'll be sharing towards the end of the session i'll share all the uh, links at once okay so don't worry about the links anyways i'm pasting this particular link in the chat okay so that is where i got the nginx ingress controller link then if you uh, see the content so i can deploy the ingress controller in variety of platforms so i can use it in minikube gcp aws azure okay let's see the bare metal way of deploying it okay just click on bare metal then it is showing so in uh, using the bare metal since you will not have the cloud load balancer it is asking me to use the notebook okay i can take this particular command and run it but I just wanted to show you what exactly are the contents in this okay deployment.yaml file okay I'm just copying that link open that link um, in a separate tab okay just copy all the contents and then I am pasting it in my uh, you know VS code okay in some a file okay but what I'll do is I'll um, you know use that same link only i will not you know run this yaml file i'll directly run from the link okay if you see here this ingress controller is being deployed in a particular namespace ingress nginx okay that's why uh, we have the namespace object created okay and there are some service account config maps cluster role cluster role binding so we'll see about this later so all i'm worried is how this ingress controller is being deployed okay if i just check the uh, different other objects so there is a service okay and there is one more service this service is being exposed as a node port okay then if i scroll yes so if you see here there is a deployment object understood so this ingress control is being deployed as a deployment object and uh, so these are various parameters for that deployment object okay there are plenty of parameters so when i we were talking about the writing the ingress rules we talked about the ingress class right so where exactly is that ingress class okay what is the ingress class name that is given to this uh, ingress control if i just search for ingress or the class okay i will find that ingress class somewhere okay see here understood ingress class so ingress class is nginx that's why when we are talking about the path based routing rules so i gave the ingress class name as nginx so these rules will be implemented by a ingress controller with this class name understood guys understood right it's okay so i have one cluster running inside my uh, civo platform so i'll change it to that context okay then what i'll do is i'll uh, go back to my official documentation that is showing me how to install this ingress controller i'll just paste the complete command okay just copy this command and then run it so you should also run this in the kubeadm based cluster okay namespace is created service account config map cluster role deployment ingress class see here it is created an ingress class right so what is the ingress class it is nginx understood 
understood or not yes sir now let's see cube city will get a uh, power services um, ingress class everything in the which namespace this is deployed this is deployed in the ingress and the next namespace right so let's see all the objects in that namespace once okay if you see uh, there are some uh, pods okay which are completed running and there is one pod which is running which is nothing but the ingress and the next controller pod okay and then this pod is exposed as a node port okay and that too with the port number 3245 okay and the ingress class is what is the name of the ingress class is nginx understood guys so this is the pod that is actually implementing my ingress rules okay so now ingress control is up and running let's deploy our application so i'll deploy three different pods with three different cluster ip services right okay so let's go ahead and deploy the application so ingress rules we can uh, you know uh, what do you say deploy after our application so i'm just doing kubectl apply minus a application so there will be three different pods and there are three different services created for this pod and all are cluster ip services so i'll just do kubectl get pod and svc and anyways everything is running in the um, you know default namespace okay as i see here there is a pod and there is a particular service assigned to that particular pod perfect now let's deploy the other object which is nothing but the ingress object so this ingress object uh, defines how to route the traffic okay so there are three different routes slash slash alexa and slash details okay let me apply that ingress file as well okay it is path based ingress okay so the object is of type ingress okay so what i can do is i can just use kubectl get ing so ing is the alias name for ingress if i get the ingress see here there is ingress okay this is the name of the ingress if i go back to the, my manifest file so this is the name of the ingress now see one of the important thing the class understood class is nginx that means that this these rules are being implemented by a controller with nginx as the name class name okay let's try to go uh, a dip deeper uh, kubectl describe ing i wanted to describe this ingress rules okay i want i want to know what are the routes created etc okay if i describe this ingress rules right i can see the host the host is slash means okay you access the application using any ip address that is corresponding to that uh, you know ingress controller and it can also use any port that is completely you all i am cared is the path the slash after the slash that's why host is a star that indicates for all the host if it is slash then i am saying you forward the back end to this service and the service is listening on 80 and what are the end points for that service so this is there is only one pod responding that pod is running on 5000 similarly for alexa similarly for details is there any doubt guys on this part i am good with that so this is a service what is the uh, we, what we how many pods that services are managing only one pod because i have not deployed a deployment i have i have deployed a pod okay so if you are not sure again just use kubectl get endpoint okay you can see for a particular service there is only one endpoint the same information is given here in the ingress if you describe it the same information will be shown here okay so now what uh, what i'll do is i'll try to access my ingress pod okay where exactly that ingress pod is running guys it is running in the ingress nginx namespace correct that means that in order to access that uh, pod i have to use the ip address of my cluster 
with the node port of my ingress pod it is 3245 but what exactly is the cluster ip address so in my case i have a different cluster in your case you can use the master ip or any of the worker ips okay i have the ip address for my cluster i'll take that ip address colon 3245 is the port on which my ingress control is listening if i just enter it so it is obviously it is a slash right it is slash even if you don't put the slash it will work because if you see the ingress uh, file i've used the path prefix as uh, path type as prefix if i'm using exact then definitely i have to put slash but if i'm using prefix i don't have to put slash it will uh, obviously it will respond then there is one more route what is the other route it is slash alexa then see another application is responding okay if i see the other uh, endpoint it is slash details see that particular pod is responding when i'm saying about pod these are nothing but the different applications okay let's try to access some route which is not defined like slash demo see the nginx controller is responding with not found error understood guys okay so once we are done with the ingress so we have uh, seen all these you know commands okay but one thing which we haven't you know talked about is are these ingress controllers different from your reverse proxy okay what exactly a reverse proxy will do generally so reverse proxy will listen on some um, you know the uh, url or the port or the ip okay so they listen on some port or the url and then they'll divert the traffic to different backend ports right let's say if it is uh, you know uh, the request on 80 it can forward the traffic to a set of backend instances okay similarly uh, if it is uh, traffic is coming from a separate dns right if it is from www.google.com then it can divert the traffic to the different instances so so already proxy uh, servers like the ha proxy and the next Apache, uh, these are all doing this the same kind of task, right? But why we have to give it different name like ingress controller inside the Kubernetes? There is no need, right? Already there are, uh, you know, proxy servers doing the same kind of work. Okay, but if you remember yesterday when we are using HA proxy, first we install the HA proxy, then it was in the running state. Okay, then we stopped it for making the changes then we added some configuration to the ha proxy at uh, this location slash etc slash ha proxy then ha proxy dot conf right we modified the ha proxy config and then we restarted the ha proxy correct to reload the configuration this is what we have done right understood yes, that means for every configuration change, I have to restart the service. But in case of an ingress controller, you doesn't have to do that. You have to, you can dynamically add some new ingress rules. You can uninstall, uh, you can remove the existing rules. So the ingress controller is smart enough to read those ingress rules on the fly. It will dynamically read them. It will hot reload the configuration and it will change the route accordingly. Okay. So in order to prove that, what I'll do is, I'll uh, take the ingress pod, okay? And then I'll uh, uh, get into that uh, pod. It is QCTL EXCC hyphen IT, that name of the pod, but that pod is in the ingress nginx. Okay, so now I'm, uh, one second. So I have to give the shell also, right, command. So now I'm in the, uh, into the um, uh, ingress controller spot if i just do ls so there should be a config file okay where is that config file yeah nginx conf if i just do cat nginx conf it will be very huge file okay but let's say i wanted to grip one of the route okay what is that route that we have defined in the ingress controller let's say slash details is a route i configured right so let's search for slash details. 
okay it is getting giving me fewer details okay what i'll do is let's get at least 10 results like this hyphen a 10 if you see here inside the nginx conf there is a route that means that if any request coming from slash details so you send it to this service and the service port is this location is slash details namespace is default because my app is running on default namespace see here a route is created for that endpoint correct this is like an uh, you know similar to ha proxy configuration that we have done okay now what i'll do is instead of uh, this alexa what i'll do is i'll just do my name okay then i'll just apply these new changes new route the new route is configured if i run the same query again okay i'm running slash details right okay so i have to change the slash details okay but slash details is hard coded in the uh, application so i can't uh, change it so uh, let's search for the vikram itself okay so that that information should be there now okay see here it is there right when i change the route it immediately got reflected in the nginx ingress controller i didn't bring down the pod i didn't bring it up but the configuration is loaded right correct now if i try to access the application from the browser with my name it should work see it worked i didn't hot uh, i did not bring down the port for the uh, you know changes to be made it is hot reloaded let's do one thing let's remove these rules remove then you search for my route nothing slash details nothing the route is properly configured if i try to apply it one more time then if you try to search again they are back understood guys so this is advantage of using ingress controller from reverse proxy ports so for the reverse proxies we have to reload the configuration but let's say i have you know onboarded an application immediately what i'll do i'll create an ingress file and i'll just run it automatically the reverse proxy will be configured in the real time understood so this is path based routing okay uh, now let's go back to you know uh, uh, url based routing so inside the url based routing what i did is instead of using path i have created two different applications okay these are uh, some graphical based applications and one will respond on connected hyphen city.com and the other one will have connected factory.com okay um, i can uh, expose this ingress controller as a node port and then i can create a proxy server the reason why i need a proxy server in this case is okay unlike the other uh, unlike the path based routing okay so where is that type run yeah so for path based routing this worked because my application is not dependent on the ip plus port combination it is only taking care about the path but in case of host based okay url based okay i cannot expose the application as a node port because if i'm exposing as a node port i have to definitely include the port number right if i include the port number url based routing won't work because it will work on exact url match so that's why i have to use ha proxy and then i have to you know map the dns names to the ha proxy's ip address which i don't want to do okay so this time i'll expose the ingress controller as a load balancer since i'm not on cloud i am going for the mini queue understood right so this time i'll go for mini queue and this time i'll use traffic as the ingress controller okay traffic and also along with the two ui applications i'll also be exposing schooner k dashboard so if you're not sure what is schooner k dashboard we already done a video okay so you can refer to that okay 
So now the complete setup can look like this where I have the traffic ingress controller exposed as a node port if you are running uh, on prem. Okay, then you have to definitely employ a HA proxy. Okay, that takes care of uh, routing the uh, you know incoming AT traffic to the out uh, the external traffic to the some port number. Okay, so this we will not see. What we'll see is we'll expose the traffic ingress controller directly as the load balancer. Okay, so there are two different applications. Okay, and for the two different applications, there are URL based routes. Okay, so here the ingress class I'm using as traffic. Okay, so for the, for the host, I'm using connectedcity.com, then it will be forwarded to some other backends. Okay, for connectedfactory.com, it will be forwarded to some other backends. Similarly, for the Schooner dashboard, right? I also created an ingress rule. Okay, for Schooner dashboard, uh, internally there is a service created cluster IP. So I'm using that service name and the port. Okay, so the uh, Schooner is recently okay. The K dash is the old name. Okay, Schooner is the latest name. Okay, it is renamed. So the manifest file which I'm showing here, the service name and everything are old. So okay, so I've updated everything in the manifest files. So you can we'll implement, uh, we'll run those latest YAML files. Okay, for that particular Schooner dashboard, I'm using this as the host, which is ka dashboard.com. Okay, and the traffic itself has a dashboard. Okay, and for traffic also there is an internal cluster IP for the dashboard. So for the dashboard, I'm using traffic-dashboard.com as the URL. Okay. Now, if you see, there are four different URLs defined: one for the or uh, two for the applications, one for the traffic dashboard, and the other one is the Kubernetes dashboard. Okay. And all these URLs will redirect to some services running inside the cluster, and all the services are of type cluster IP. Okay. So let's go ahead and deploy the uh, you know ingress controller. The problem is this ingress controller, uh, which is traffic, is depending upon the Helm chart. Okay, so what they have done is they have taken all the YAML files and they bundled it as a Helm chart. Okay, we'll talk about Helm chart later. Okay, in order to implement or install Helm chart, we need to have the Helm installed in our uh, system. Okay, and then we have to add the repository using this uh, command then you have to install the application so don't worry everything is given in the official documentation okay so before moving forward what we'll do is we'll install helm first okay and uh, if you want to install helm just type for helm install okay so there will be github okay there will be an official documentation just click on the official documentation and then go to the uh, download the desired version this link so you'll have the download link for almost all the OS. Okay. Uh, so for Windows, what I can do is I can download the exe file, which is Helm 3.7 Windows AMD 64 zip. You can unzip it and you can run the exe file. So automatically it gets in, uh, installed. For the uh, you know for the Ubuntu or Linux, right? So they have given uh, in the direct installation phase. So you can run these commands like this. Nothing. So it will automatically install. You don't have to do anything. You just run these three commands as the root user. Understood? So once you have the Helm, right? Okay. So you can just do Helm version. Okay. It will print the Helm version. That's it. The Helm CLI is installed. It is more like kubectl. Okay. Utility. Okay. And one uh, one thing to remember here is that helm will always look for the cube config file to talk to the kubernetes cluster so make sure that you have the cluster and the cube config file in your root directory okay in that machine only you install helm so that helm can read that cube config file and talk to the cluster okay so what now i'm doing is uh, i'm switching to the mini cube cluster i'm switching to my mini cube cluster okay and before deploying the traffic ingress controller is uh, i wanted to enable metal lb so we know what is metal lb right it is on-prem load balancer okay so what i will do is i'll uh, enable that metal lb but before that i'll check the minikube ip address so it is 148 then i'll uh, list the add-ons 
of the mini cube so if you check the add-ons of the mini cube we already have the dashboard uh, ingress istio metal lb everything available so all you have to do is you have to use mini cube add-ons enable and that plugin name okay it will automatically install that plugin so similarly i can also install ingress directly from here but i am preferring to download it from the external sources okay so now what i'll do is i'll uh, enable the metal lb okay so how do i enable it guys it is mini cube add-ons enable metal llb and then we have to configure metal llb right because it has to assign some public ips not public ips load balancer ips okay so it is mini cube configure metal lb so it is asking for the uh, range so i know that uh, mini cube is running on this 148 so i can assign uh, ip address from 150 to 160 i'm completely safe so whenever you expose any service as a load balancer it will assign one ip from this 11 ip addresses okay yeah. so i am done with my uh, metal lb configuration so if you are not sure where exactly this metal lb is running if i just do cube it will get namespace so for metal lb there is a separate namespace created so you can check the resources in that namespace let's go back to the traffic and then see how to install it it is t-r-a-e-i-f-i-k traffic installation then just click on traffic installation here so it is saying use the helm chart to install use the helm chart and then it is asking to add this repo okay and the requirements are you should have the helm installed otherwise you install helm and then you add this repo just run this command where your helm is installed okay so now i've already added it so it is saying it already exists then uh, update your repo so once you add the repository information right you have to update the index then i updated it so just install traffic using helm install so this helm release name is traffic and the uh, chart is this okay so don't worry about this we'll talk about this uh, later okay so what i'm doing is helm install for this helm installation i'm naming it as traffic okay so click on install so the helm chart gets installed okay the helm chart got installed if i just do kubectl okay let's first list the helm releases it is helm uh, list so there is one helm chart called as traffic it is released in the default namespace and the, the status is deployed if i just do kubectl get all okay so the traffic controller is running okay it is in the uh, pending state okay it is zero by one running okay let's wait uh, till it runs see now it is running and now uh, since i expose this traffic as a load balancer ip i can simply use this ip address right i don't have to you know use the node port or anything with the ip so simply i can use this ip address okay yeah so now my uh, traffic is up and running okay so let's go back to the official documentation and uh, here they are saying for exposing the traffic dashboard so by default traffic doesn't expose the traffic dashboard for security concerns but i can run this kubectl port forward this command to access the application okay what i'm doing is i'm just trying to uh, i just copied it okay so what exactly we are doing here we are using kubectl port forward okay we know what is port forwarding right temporarily exposing a pod so what he is doing here is he is exposing a pod but he directly is not able to get the pod name so he has used a variable okay so inside the variable he is running a command okay let's take that command and run it in our cluster okay it has given me a name right pod name so what is this pod name it is the traffic pod so since this pod name is always uh, changing so is dynamically reading it okay so that means so i can replace this with the dynamically generated name okay 
so now it is clear he is exposing a pod our pod name is this and the on the host machine it is 9000 and the container is 9000 so this is the kubectl port forward command that we know okay so it is kubectl port forward a pod with the name of this on the host machine you expose on 9000 but internally i am running 9000 okay this is what he has uh, given in the documentation for exposing the dashboard okay he has given other configuration as well so we won't do that okay now let's go back to the vs code and see url based routing what exactly i've done okay so similar to the uh, path based routing i have two different applications now this time i have two different applications running as a um, you know deployment okay there are three instances okay i have used one image connected city and the port is 5000 same flask based application there is a service created and there is one more deployment there is a service created if i show you the ingress rules uh, for this application right okay if i am uh, have to show the ingress rules it's same ingress object so instead of uh, path here i'm using host here so whenever i'm hitting connected city.com okay you forward the uh, traffic to this service name so this service name i already used here in the application service files here in services listening on 80. similarly for the other route connected city.com connected factory.com uh, I'm forwarding the traffic to this service. So this service is already mentioned in the application file. So what I'll do initially, I'll apply both these files first. Okay. So I'm in the path based routing. I'll go to the URL based routing. And first I'll apply both the application files. So application deployment files done. And then kubectl apply minus F application ingress rules okay both are done okay now if i just do kubectl uh, get pod and uh, okay service and also ingress i'm also doing the ingress see there are six containers for my application one is for traffic ingress controller traffic ingress controller is exposed as a load balancer but internally connected city and counter factory applications are exposed as cluster ip and there is an ingress object created if i just describe this ingress object i'll get the extended information right so what is that extended information is so earlier it was star if you remember this time the request should definitely come from a particular url okay so if the url is this i'll forward the traffic to this service but this time the service is backed by three different pod instances because this time i have deployed my application as a deployment controller deployment set and there are three replicas so that's why there are three different endpoints similarly for the connected factory i have a service and the service is managing three different replicas understood guys and the class name is also traffic as uh, being shown here is there any doubt uh, up to this point i'm good Vikram. okay so now let's go back to the um, schooner dashboard okay we already know this schooner dashboard right we already seen how to uh, install this schooner dashboard okay so first let's go to their official site okay and then go to the github page of schooner and then uh, they are saying uh, you can run uh, this yaml file okay for installing the schooner and also you have to create all these uh, service accounts and all so i don't want to create all this so what i did is i mentioned everything in a separate yaml file okay there is a deployment and also for this deployment there is a service schooner service okay earlier what i did is the schooner service i have exposed as a load balancer or the node port so i was able to access it outside the cluster but this time 
I am using ingress controller that is acting like a front end. So I have to expose this as a service, uh, sorry, cluster IP. So this service is cluster IP service and the service account cluster role binding and all I have created here. So you don't have to manually run the commands like this. Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll uh, you know, apply this Sconer, uh, what is this dashboard.yaml. Okay. So now this dashboard is uh, installed. So let's see the ingress rules that I wrote for the dashboard. So if you see the dashboard, there is a service involved, right? The service name is Sconer namespace is cube system okay remember there is a namespace involved earlier we have deployed all the applications and ingress controller in the default namespace but spooner by default gets installed in the cube system namespace now if i see the uh, uh, you know the ingress rules that i wrote okay so there is a namespace also involved that means that this ingress object gets installed in this namespace then when you hit this k dashboards.com so it will forward that to a service known as schooner. What is the service name as schooner? If you see the schooner YAML file, so I have a service object and the name of the service object is itself schooner. And it is listening on port 80, so there is port 80. Okay, so this is the, uh, you know, the ingress rule that I wrote. Okay, so I'll apply this also. Understood guys? So I'm just you know, applying each and every file okay so if you are not sure whether this is installed or not just go to kubectl get uh, pod and then ing uh, we know that that ingress file got installed in the cube system namespace so just look for the ingress file in that name you see it is there and if i am just describing this okay i don't need this but uh, you know i just wanted to show you okay describe this ingress file and that too in the cube system see uh, the host is this and at the back end it is forwarding it to schooner dot uh, schooner service and there is one instance that is backing that service understood so now what we have done is we have installed the applications we have installed these dashboards so what are the other things is we have something known as metric server okay we'll come back to this metric server in prometheus so what happens is with the uh, using metric server you know i can um, you know see the real time cpu and memory statistics of the machine my uh, host machine okay so in order to install it directly i can search for metrics server kubernetes where it will point uh, me to a github page and then inside the github page there are plenty of uh, you know installation instructions so i can just run this yaml file to install the you know uh, metric server or else what i did is i already have the metric server okay you can run this file kubectl apply uh, minus f metric server okay so my metric server is also installed okay now one final thing which i have not done is i know uh, that uh, using port forward i can expose the traffic uh, port but i wanted to create an internal service for this okay for this i what i did is i created a service okay and i will also show you how i created that particular service how, how i arrived at that service file okay so if i'm doing kubectl port forward i'm temporarily exposing that port but i can also use kubectl expose right okay if you see the kubectl expose command which i wrote okay so it is kubectl expose okay uh, a deployment okay because traffic is running as a deployment and the name of the deployment is traffic and then what i'm doing is i'm exposing that particular port okay the container port and i'm using the node port as the service okay to in order to externally access it but in order to access it internally what i can do is i can use the cluster ip service I can give any name okay so this time i've given traffic web UI as the name of that service i know that the pod is uh, you know listening on 80 9000 so i've used target port as 9000 incoming port i'll use as 80 most of the times in case of a selector okay in the official documentation in the port forward he has given me a hint here so he is saying select or get all ports with the selector the selector is this 
okay i have used the same selector <clears throat> and this is how i created that service okay since i have the uh, internal service now i can create an ingress rules for that also right correct guys one second what happened that's it so i created a service internal service with the name traffic web ui so immediately i created an ingress rule for it that means i have this um, you know host your dns name then immediately once i hit this dns i can forward that uh, to internal service with this name so that is with the same name i created a service okay so now again i will apply both the traffic dashboard okay what is that uh, it is traffic dashboard.yaml so i can apply multiple files at once using hyphen f hyphen f hyphen f okay so uh, i'm applying both the files okay uh, i applied both the files if i just do the kubectl get ingress in the default namespace right so there is one more uh, route now traffic web viewing okay so far everything is perfect okay everything is set up in place okay but where are the dns names that i have used i don't have the dns names correct i have created so many dns names but where exactly are the dns name i don't have i have not purchased all these domain names but how do i test them locally guys i can use local dns services okay so uh, where exactly uh, i mean how do these dns uh, resolve guys to which ip address they get resolved to they get resolved to the traffic pod right if i just to keep still get pod and svc so this is the ingress controller okay so this ingress controller has to receive the traffic that means that i created load balancer to expose that particular pod and this is the load balancer ip so so all your dns calls okay uh, the traffic uh, um, what do you say um so connected city.com okay all uh, these urls right they should uh, point to the same ip address then only my ingress controller will uh, parse them according to the uh, you know the rules defined in the ingress controller so all i'm talking about is this and then um, i have a another dns name which is skates dashboard.com another one which i have is the i think it is traffic uh, dashboard.com okay so all these urls right them they should map to the same ip address they should resolve to the same ip address but i don't have any dns server right so for the dummy dns what i can do is i can add these entries to my local dns server so in linux the local dns server is slash etc slash host okay if you just copy this contents okay ip address space the dns name ip address space the dns name so do etc dot uh, you know slash etc slash host folder or the file so it is a file then if, if you go to the browser and hit this url or if you simply do ping and this uh, you know the dns name it will resolve to this ip address understood guys yes welcome but in windows it is uh, slightly different so in windows it is located in oh, the c drive windows system 32 okay and then the drivers okay inside the drivers there is etc and there is a host file okay this is a file remember okay so i'll just paste this link in the chat okay so i have to right click and then uh, edit with notepad but you have to open it in the administrator mode okay then only you'll make changes so if you see here already i added the dns names okay so there is a url and the dns name so this dns name is nothing but the traffic ingress controllers load balance ip okay so now i have added so initially when you are adding you'll be uh, you know prompted to run the file or open the file as an administrator mode you have to do that for making any changes 
okay since now i have the changes uh, i can simply you know okay once you add these changes right in linux you don't have to do anything but in windows you have to use a command known as ip config okay ip config space slash flush dns so this is just to reload the dns <clears throat> okay i'll just give this command also ip config slash uh, flush dns okay guys then my dns will be loaded then if i just do ping on any of the uh, you know dns names that i've just mentioned in my host file see here it is resolving to that ip right now i am not worried about having the dns server having the public ip nothing i can locally test it and i can easily scale it now let's see the connectedcity.com okay go to the browser then see this connected factory so the url came <clears throat> correct and now if you see the output here every time when i refresh there will be different uh, responses being printed because this service internal service for the connected factory has the three endpoints three replicas and each time it is load balancing the request okay now let's do connectedcity.com okay see here this is a different application exposed okay now there is uh, something known as traffic dashboard okay so in order to access the traffic dashboard you have to also use slash dashboard okay otherwise this won't work okay i think it is slash dashboard slash star okay okay it is slash dat, uh, dashboard slash okay that's it now if you see the traffic dashboard it will show uh, extended information like the the ports uh, opened on it okay different routes if i click on these routes you can see various routes i'm using i'm using connectedcity.com factory slash dashboard kids dashboard you know <clears throat> some of them are uh, kubernetes some of them are uh, you know internal to the traffic so i can see what are the different ingress rules okay then you can see the tra uh, success warnings on er and errors <clears throat> okay everything you can see it directly in the uh, traffic dashboard now if you see the http services so i have multiple services right internally okay and uh, the service type is also mentioned okay if i go back to the dashboard so i'll see um, you know i can get uh, you know various other informations also from the traffic dashboard and also i can see how many of the requests are success how many of them are failed okay so yeah so this is about the traffic but there is one more dashboard right so it is kates dashboard.com so it is nothing but this kuna dashboard so if you remember we need to enter a token so how do we get the token it is kubectl uh, i think it is get uh, secret right it is get secret so then there will be a secret created with this corner what we have to do is we have to describe that secret first kubectl describe that secret okay so i have to use the name of the object secret then you we just copy paste the token then enter the token over here see i have the dashboard okay so i think the metrics are not working uh, okay I don't know why metrics are not working or not coming uh, let's see the the metric server is installed in the cube system guys if you see the manifest file you'll understand is it then the bit. yeah okay so metric server is running but uh, anyways metric server needs some time for the metrics to uh, to be available if i just do cube ctl top uh, notes see it is running if i'm just doing top on notes it is running and top on pods it is running okay each uh, you know pod is using this much of cpu and this is the memory 
32 mi okay but i think their dashboard needs some time to access or probably some configuration or some mismatches okay so we can worry about it later okay and also uh, if you s go back to the traffic dashboard right okay so there are some services and then some routes so i think i can also bring down a pod or something and i can also check okay to see if it is running uh, i can just delete the metric server in the cube system namespace so it is deleted i think uh, it will be shown here that one pod is down uh, probably i should wait for some time Oh, there are uh, there are some chances that uh, you know the pod itself comes up immediately in many cases we may not see that particular error okay so that is just an you know uh, let's leave that it's not of not a concern now okay so that's it guys uh, yeah so that is the url based routing so we had uh, you know applied all the yaml files ingress files for the dashboards uh, for the connected city connected factory and for the kids dashboard we have described the secret and then we uh, uh, you know uh, see in the or the uh, uh, access the dashboard using the urls and then there is a traffic dashboard okay and remember uh, remember one thing so the dummy dns entries that we just created right so in windows we have to use that but in linux based machines right um, i think i don't have access to a linux vm okay you have to go to uh, you have to use vi editor to open that ect slash host file okay and then add these entries okay all these entries at the last you will understand once you open the etc host file you will understand it clearly so you have to you know add these entries in the last uh, on uh, to this file okay in windows it is uh, the location that we just discussed okay guys so that's it for this video guys if you like our video subscribe to our youtube channel and also join our facebook group the links are given in the description below you can also scan the qr code being shown on the video to directly point to the youtube channel and facebook group thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one